Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about density gradient centrifugation. This video covers the following contents. Introduction about density gradient centrifugation, examples of density gradient centrifugation, principle of density gradient centrifugation, properties of density gradient media, steps of density gradient centrifugation, Applications of density gradient centrifugation, advantages of density gradient centrifugation, and finally, limitations of density gradient centrifugation. Density gradient centrifugation. Density gradient centrifugation refers to an approach to separation between molecules where the separation is determined by the density of the molecules when they travel through a gradient under the force of centrifugal. Density gradient centrifugation is a powerful technique used for the separation and purification of molecules based on their density. Density gradient centrifugation takes advantage of the principle that molecules will migrate through a density gradient when subjected to the centrifugal force with the rate of migration determined by their density. Miron Brachy a protein scientist at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden in Brooklyn, New York, invented the first kind of density gradient centrifugation in 1951. Brachy's method called rate zonal centrifugation separated particles based on size and shape in a relatively dense solution along a density gradient. The process of density gradient centrifugation involves creating a density gradient with a centrifuge tube. This gradient is achieved by layering solutions of different densities, typically in the form of sucrose or cesium chloride gradient. The sample containing the molecules to be separated is carefully layered on the top of the density gradient. Two types of density gradient centrifugation are rate zonal centrifugation and isopecnic centrifugation. Examples of density gradient centrifugation. The first example of the density gradient centrifugation is Meselsel Stahl experiment on DNA replication. Density gradient centrifugation played a crucial role in the landmark Meselsen Stahl experiment, which provides evidence for the semi conservative nature of DNA replication. In this experiment, different isotopes of nitrogen were used to label DNA. By subjecting the DNA samples to density gradient centrifugation, it was possible to separate DNA molecules based on their density. The experiment demonstrated that after one round of DNA replication in the presence of heavy nitrogen, the DNA molecules formed a hybrid band with intermediate density. This result supported the semi-conservative model where each newly synthesized DNA strands contains one original strand and one newly synthesized strand. The second example for the density gradient centrifugation is isolation of microsomal fraction and membrane vesicles. Density gradient centrifugation is widely used in cell biology to isolate specific cellular components and organelles. One example is the isolation of the microsomal fraction from muscle homogenates Microsomes are small vesicles derived from the endoplasmic reticulum and contain membrane-bound proteins and other endoplasmic reticulum components. By subjecting the muscle homogenate to density gradient centrifugation, the microsomes can be separated based on their density. Subsequently, the membrane vesicle within the microsomal fraction can be further separated based on their different densities allowing for the isolation of specific membrane components for the further analysis and study. Principle of Density Gradient Centrifugation Density gradient centrifugation is based on the principle that molecules settle down under a centrifugal force until they reach a medium with the density the same as theirs. In this case, a medium with a density gradient is employed which either has to decrease density or increasing density. 
Molecules in a sample move through the medium as the sample is rotated, creating a centrifugal force. The more dense molecules begin to move towards the bottom as they move through the density gradient. The molecule then becomes suspended at a point in which the density of the particles equals the surrounding medium. In this way, molecules with different densities are separated at different layers which can then be recovered by various processes. Properties of density gradient media. A perfect density gradient media includes the following properties. Enough solubility to provide the necessary range of densities. Does not create solutions with high viscosity in the required density range. Does not have to be hypoosmotic or hyperosmotic when the particles that are to be separated are highly osmotically sensitive. Solutions for the gradient must be adjusted to the pH and ionic strengths that are compatible with the particles that are being separated. The density gradient media does not affect the biological activities of the sample and it is non-toxic and not processed by cells. It do not disturb assay protocols or cause a reaction with the tubes for centrifuge. The property of the gradient media can be used to determine the level of concentration. It should be easy to get rid of the pure product and it should be autoclavable and reasonable price. Steps of density gradient centrifugation. The first step is preparation of density gradient. A density gradient is created by layering a medium with varying concentrations of a solute in a centrifuge tube. The lower concentration solution is gently layered over a higher concentration solution to form a gradient. Common density gradient media includes sucrose or cesium chloride solutions. The second step is sample application. The sample containing the particles to be separated is carefully applied on the top of the density gradient. This can be done using a pipette or other suitable methods to ensure the sample is layered without disturbing the gradient. Step 3 is ultra centrifugation. The tubes containing the density gradient and samples are placed in an ultra centrifuge. The centrifuge is operated at high speeds to generate a strong centrifugal force. This force causes the particles in the sample to migrate through the density gradient. Step 4 is particle migration. As a centrifuge spins, the particles in the sample begins to migrate through the density gradient. The rate of migration is determined by the relative density of the particles compared to the surrounding medium. Heavier particles will settle towards the bottom of the tube while lighter particles will remain suspended at higher levels within the gradient. The fifth step is equilibrium and fractionation. Over time, the particles reach a point in the density gradient where the density matches that of the surrounding medium. At this point, they become evenly distributed or suspended within the gradient. This state of equilibrium also allows for the separation of particles based on their sensitivity on the sensitivity and density. Step 6 is fraction collection. After the equilibrium is reached, the centrifuge is stopped and the tubes are carefully removed. The tubes are then fractionated by collecting fractions from different levels of the density gradient and each fraction contains particles with a specific density. The final and seventh step is particle isolation. The collected fractions are processed further to isolate the particles of interest. Depending on the nature of the particles and the experiment requirements, various techniques such as centrifugation, filtration or chromatography can be employed to isolate the particles as an individual units. Applications of 
density gradient centrifugation. The first application is purification of biomolecules. Density gradient centrifugation is commonly employed for the purification of biomolecules such as proteins, nucleic acids and subcellular organelles. By exploiting the differences in density, the technique enables the separation of these biomolecules from impurities or contaminants. It is particularly useful for purifying large volume of biomolecules effectively. The second application is virus purification and study. Density gradient centrifugation is extensively used in virology for the purification of different types of viruses. Viruses often have specific densities and by using density gradient centrifugation, researchers can separate and isolate viruses from other components in a sample. This purification step is crucial for further studies on virus structure, composition and function. The third application of density gradient centrifugation is separation of particles. Density gradient centrifugation serves as a powerful separation technique for particles with different densities. It enables the separation of particles based on the density differences allowing for the isolation of specific particles from complex mixtures. This can be applied to separate various types of particles such as cellular components, subcellular components, subcellular organelles and biological macromolecules. The fourth application of density gradient centrifugation is determination of particle densities. In addition to its separation capabilities, density gradient centrifugation can also be used to determine the densities of particles. By creating a density gradient and analyzing the position at which particles equilibrate within the gradient, the density can be estimated. This information is valuable for characterizing particles, assessing their composition and understanding their behavior in different environment. The final and the fifth application is study of particle interactions. Density gradient centrifugation can be utilized to investigate particle interactions. By subjecting particles to density gradient centrifugation under different conditions or in the presence of specific ligands or substrates, researchers can observe changes in their distribution along the gradient. This provides insights into the nature of particle interactions including molecular recognition, complex formation and binding affinities. Advantages of density gradient centrifugation. The first advantage is high resolution. Density gradient centrifugation allows the separation of molecules with a high degree of resolution, making it useful for the purification of specific molecules or organelles. The second advantage is high efficiency. Density gradient centrifugation is highly efficient at separating molecules based on their size, shape and density, allowing for the separation of large quantities of sample in a short amount of time. The third advantage is gentle on samples. Density gradient centrifugation is relatively gentle on samples as it does not rely on physical factors such as filtration or sedimentation. The fourth advantage is versatility. The density gradient centrifugation can be used to separate a wide range of molecules including proteins, nucleic acids, cells and other cell organelles. Finally, limitations of density gradient centrifugation. The first limitation is complexity. Density gradient centrifugation requires the preparation of a gradient which can be time consuming and requires the specialized equipment and expertise. The second limitation is limited to separating molecules based on density. Density gradient centrifugation is limited to separating molecules based on their density, size and shape and it may not be suitable for separating molecules based on other physical properties. The third 
limitation is limited to separating molecules with a narrow size range. Density gradient centrifugation is most effective at separating molecules with a narrow size range and it may not be suitable for separating molecules with a wide size range. The fourth and final limitation is expense. Density gradient centrifugation requires specialized equipment and consumables which can be very expensive. Dear viewers, that's all about the density gradient centrifugation. Thank you for the support. Thank you.